Okay, this is the first video on the grade 11 topic Newton's laws and in this video we'll be looking at Newton's first law. So if we go and take a look at the statement of that law, that's on page 3 of your notes, and we just highlight a few things. Firstly we're talking about types of motion. So we're talking about an object that is either at rest so it's at rest all the time, it's not moving, or it could be moving at a uniform velocity. So by uniform velocity, we've got to remember that velocity is a vector, so direction is important. So if an object is moving in a straight line at the same speed, then its velocity is not changing, and that we call uniform velocity. So Newton's first law says that the object will either remain at rest if it is at rest already or it will keep moving in a straight line at constant speed unless there's a net force that acts on it. So we've got to be able to identify when objects change their motion, when they accelerate or decelerate, we've got to identify what's exerting the net force and is it forwards or backwards and then the motion of the object will change so if there is a net force acting on the object then it won't remain at rest anymore it'll start to move and if it's already moving then it's either going to speed up or slow down when the net force acts on it okay so let's go and look at a few examples on page four of our notes we've got a picture of a motorbike and a rider and the there's a collision with the barrier so let's go there to page four and we see two very different types of motion here but before we identify the types of motion let's consider the horizontal plane that would be the horizontal plane and the vertical plane and we need to identify the forces that are acting on the bike during this collision so we'll realize that the wall, the barrier, is exerting a large force in the opposite direction to the motion of the bike. So because that's the only horizontal force that we're considering, that would become the net force. So this bike is experiencing that net force that Newton talks about in his law. And therefore, its motion is going to change. So it was traveling in here at some kind of constant velocity. And then there was a collision with the barrier, and then there was this large net force that was acting opposite to its motion. If we look at the bike rider, there's the vertical plane, and he was traveling in this plane before the collision, so he was over there, and he's ended up going forwards. So the question is, why does he continue to move forwards in a straight line for a short period of time? Well, there's a big net force acting backwards on the bike, but that net force is not acting on the rider. So according to Newton's first law, he'll just continue moving at constant velocity in a straight line for a short period of time. So we need to identify which of the two objects are experiencing a net force, and that was the motorbike, and that net force was backwards on the motorbike, and which of the objects are not experiencing the net force, and that would be the rider. He's not experiencing a net force in the horizontal plane, so he just continues to move at constant velocity forwards. So if we look at those, if we look at a force diagram, for the bark in the horizontal plane there's going to be a large force from the wall backwards and that would uh, change its motion it would be going at some initial velocity and then come to rest so it would be accelerating backwards because of this net force that's acting on it but the rider, 
he's got no horizontal forces acting on him, he might well have a gravitational force and you might argue that there's a little bit of friction here, but uh, that might slow him down, but if we ignore friction, there's no horizontal forces that would change his motion. There's no net force and therefore he will continue to move forwards at constant velocity. Okay, the second example I want to look at is on page 5. So let's go to page 5. And we're looking at a collision here. We're looking at the effect of an airbag or a, a, a seat belt on the motion of a crash test dummy or a passenger. So let's go to this diagram. And we'll notice that this car might be traveling at constant velocity. So the passenger is traveling at constant velocity with the car and there's a collision so there's some kind of forward force here on the car and the car suddenly comes to rest so we've identified that the car is experiencing a large backward force but the passenger is still hasn't made contact really with the seat belt yet so her head was here and now it's moved forward. So in that short time period, she's moved forward because there's no real net force acting on her. Then the seat belt starts to tension up and we start to get this backward net force on the passenger, which is obviously going to then change her motion. It's going, she's gonna undergo an acceleration now because there's a net backward force on it. So for that short period of time during the collision where there was no force on her, she just continued to move forwards, probably at constant velocity if there was no real contact with the seat belt. So let's have a look at that. We've got before the collision, she, there's, she's traveling at constant velocity and the, if we were talking about the passenger, she wouldn't have any net force acting on it. But during the collision, she goes forward and she starts to press against the seat belt and the seat belt exerts a force backwards on her, which is the only horizontal force acting on her. So that is then the net force acting on her. And according to F Newton's first law, she's not going to carry on going at constant velocity. Her velocity is going to decrease rapidly because there's a net backward force and she's accelerating backwards. The next example I want to look at is on page six. Where we've got this person who doesn't have a headrest there is no headrest attached to the car so we've got the seat behind the passenger the passenger gets hit from behind by another vehicle possibly the car gets hit from behind and a big net force acts forwards on the lower body however that force is not acting on the head the, for a short period of time. So the head is, according to Newton's first law, going to remain at rest. And it does, it stays where it is. However, the body has moved forwards because it's experiencing this forward net force. So there are two parts to this uh, situation. You know, we've got the body experiencing a forward net force and the head hasn't experienced that net force, yes, the uh, neck will eventually, the muscles in the neck will eventually pull the body forward. But we talk about that short period of time where the body's moved forward and the head has remained at rest. So, net force acting forwards on the body 
no net force on the head therefore according to Newton's th first law the head should remain at rest for a short period of time the next thing I want to look at is one of our questions this is exercise 1.1 it's on page 5 oh, sorry 7 of our notes so if we go to page 7 question 3 and we asked to use Newton's first law here to explain why a passenger which is who's standing on the bus there they are and the bus suddenly takes off forwards why is it that the passenger tends well it seems that the passengers fallen backwards So I want you to pause the video and try and write an explanation for that. Okay, now that you've tried it, let's see how it went. We've got the feet in contact with the, the bus. The bus is experiencing a forward net force. A forward force of the engine, which will probably yeah you know, that's probably going to be a net force on the bus there might be some friction around on the bus but there, there's a big forward force big forward net force on the bus as it accelerates forward the feet are in contact with the floor so as the bus moves forward friction is going to try and pull the feet with it so there'll be a frictional force acting on the feet and because there are no other horizontal forces on the feet, that would become a net force. So the feet should accelerate forwards with the bus. But that net force is not acting on the upper body. So according to Newton's first law, the upper body should remain at rest for a short period of time. And a little bit later in the motion, you can see the feet have moved forward a short uh, displacement because they're experiencing the net forward force but that hasn't acted on the body so according to Newton's first law that's going to remain at rest for a short period of time so in actual fact the body gets left behind the feet are accelerated forward the body is left behind and this person topples over so how do we fix that in the second part what happens if the passenger then holds on to the overhead handles now the force of the handles on the body the forward there will be a forward net force on the body and a forward net force on the feet And that's going to get the entire body to accelerate forwards at the same rate as the, the bus. So I want you to finish exercise 1.1 and then on the website you can check your answers to that.